Energy and Environment e &E is an academic journal covering the direct and indirect environmental impacts of energy acquisition, transport, production and use. Under its editor-in-chief from 1998 to 2017, Sonia Bomer Christensen, it was known for easygoing peer review and publishing climate change denial papers. YIUFAI Sang became its editor-in-chief in May 2017. Topic abstracting and indexing The journal is abstracted and indexed in the Social Sciences Citation Index, Scopus, EBSCO databases, Current Contents, Social and Behavioral Sciences, and Compendix. According to the Journal Citation Reports, the journal has a 2012 impact factor of 0.319, ranking it 90th out of 93 journals in the category Environmental Studies. <laughs> Objective The journal's mission statement states that the publication's objective is to inform across professional and disciplinary boundaries and debate the social, economic, political and technological implications of environmental controls, as well as interrogate the science claims made to justify environmental regulations of the energy industries, including transport. Topic History Energy and Environment was first published in 1989. David Everest, Department of the Environment, United Kingdom, was its founding editor. Following his death in 1998, Bomer Christensen became the journal's editor. She and several members of the journal's editorial advisory board had previously been associated with the Energy and Environment Groups at the Science and Technology Policy Unit University of Sussex, with John Surrey. Its publisher, Multi-Science ceased trading on 31 December 2015 and the journal was transferred to SAGE. In May 2017, YIUFAI Sang became the journal's editor. Topic climate change denial and criticism The journal is regarded as a small journal that caters to climate change denialists. It has played an important role in attacking climate science and scientists, for example Michael E. Mann, several scientists and social scientists such Gavin Schmidt, Roger A. Pielk Jr. Stefan Lewandowski and Michael Ashley, have criticized that E&E &E has low standards of peer review and little impact. In addition, Ralph Keeling criticized a paper in the journal which claimed that CO2 levels were above 400 ppm in 1825, 1857 and 1942, writing in a letter to the editor, is it really the intent of E&E &E to provide a forum for laundering pseudoscience? A 2005 article in Environmental Science and Technology stated that the journal is «obscure» and that «scientific claims made in energy and environment have little credibility among scientists». Bomer Christensen acknowledged that the journal's «impact rating has remained too low for many ambitious young researchers to use it, but blamed this on «the negative attitudes of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change» IPCC, Climatic Research Unit people. According to Hans von Stork, the journal tries to give people who do not have a platform a platform, which is then attractive for skeptic papers. 
They know they can come through and that interested people make sure the paper enters the political realm. When asked about the publication in the spring of 2003 of a revised version of the paper at the center of the Soon and Balyunas controversy, Bomer Christensen said, I'm following my political agenda, a bit, anyway. But isn't that the right of the editor? Part of the journal's official mission statement reads, e and &E has consistently striven to publish many «voices» and to challenge conventional wisdoms. Perhaps more so than other European energy journal, the editor has made e and &E a forum for more skeptical analyses of «climate change» and the advocated solutions. See also Environmental engineering science List of books about renewable energy